of we in Hello and welcome to the front line. You can find us at thefrontline.army. Uh, please do, just put that in your browser and you'll be able to go straight to us and register for the uncensored newsletter. Uh, of course, we have to put various things behind a paywall and also uh, various things behind uh, various curtains because they don't want us to show them, especially on TikTok and Facebook. Um, it is a, a thing that we try to do. We try to bring you and we'll be bringing you some harrowing videos today so please be aware of that uh, please find us on patreon real truth 502 and subscribe to our daily show uh, if you want the real real news uh, not propaganda or proper news not propaganda as we say uh, i'm joined by my wonderful uh, co usual co-host uh, lee slaughter looking resplendent and we are joined today by the wonderful richard willett who is a uh, independent journalist works quite a lot with iconic and danny roscoe who is uh, one of the shall we say the, the more eminent uh, urbane uh, journalists out there. Uh, good morning. Okay. <laughs> morning. Morning. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. How are we? We're, we're good. good. Lovely. Uh, we're going to start, we're going to jump in straight away because we've got a heck of a lot to get through today. So you've got a bumper show today. Um, we're going to start, aren't we, Lee, uh, in Michigan. And there's some various things going on, isn't there? And we're going to join the dots and colour them in for you. We are. And, you know, the Michigan is the latest Republican um, nomination vote uh, between Trump and Haley in this case. And, it, and it, it's important for a number of reasons, and one of which is the scale of the vote. <laughs> Donald Trump, basically 67.8% of the vote, and Nikki Haley, 27%. She, she, she was beaten, soundly beaten, 30 plus points in her own South Carolina, her home state. And so this, this next state along Michigan, which is a you know blue leaning state. So for Trump to win by this scale is significant. So the question sort of that's posed is why is Nikki Haley not going to drop out of this race now? She's lost in every state so far. She lost to none of the above when she was the only candidate in um, I think it was Arizona. So why is she staying in? And the, the answer to that is twofold, or oh, a number of reasons. One of which is that that her funder base are basically Democrats and her funding is to keep her in the race whilst the legal side of the Trump convictions or the Trump court cases basically bleeds Trump dry or convicts him or in some other way enables them to, to, to remove him from the ballot. And the reason that, uh, that I, I've mentioned the, the bleeding dry piece is because Donald Trump is um, basically been, just been had a ruling against him yeah. uh, in, in New York courts for $355 million. And the, the interest on that $87,000 a day is takes this total sum to $455 million, practically half a billion dollars. And the judge is basically saying that you can't appeal this decision until you've paid the fine, which in itself is unusual. Um, so where we are is that Trump has not paid this yet. They, they have filed an appeal, but Trump's not paid the fine because there is a liquidity, a potential liquid, or appears to be, I should say, a liquidity issue with the Trump organization, the Trump family, because to pay half a billion dollars is, is more than significant. It's, it's a really big figure. And that also represents itself in the in, in in the numbers for the Michigan campaign. Donald Trump only spent, I say only, $1.3 million in media spend in the state, where Haley spent $16 million. Now you can you can attribute that at one level to a level of confidence that the Trump organization is going to win. But I, I'm sort of sorry looking that I, I look I look at all these dots. Why is Haley staying in the race? Who are the yeah. backers? What about th th these legal cases that Trump's fighting, both in time and in money? And then this, this 455 million uh, de decision. And then I look at the spend uh, in the various areas, various states. And it looks to me like this lawfare against Trump, this organized resistance is beginning, I hate to say it, it's beginning to, to have an effect. And the, the, 
that legal ruling that he has to pay the fine and the interest before he's allowed to appeal, A, in my view, is illegal. But secondly, I, I see this as a as, as pretty significant in the scope of things. Yeah. Um, I'm going to uh, quickly go to, if you can bring us all back up again, uh, I'm going to quickly go to uh, uh, Richard and Danny on this. Now, it is... Uh, this is something that haley has been staying in the race for, isn't it? Uh, Richard, I'll come to you first. Uh, something we're staying in the race for? Well, um, if you look into it, she says why she's staying into the race. Um, I mean, yeah, I think you, you know my kind of take on whether this is actually legitimate um, anyway, um, in terms of whether it really matters. These guys, I, I feel, always have done and always probably will do that they all bat for the same team eventually anyway. Um, but let's take it in this context. She said, I said earlier this week that no matter what happens in South Carolina, I will continue to run for president. I'm a woman of my word, Haley said. In the next 10 days, another 21 states and territories will speak. They have the right They have the right to a real choice, <laughs> not a Soviet-style Soviet election with one only candidate, and I have a duty to give them choice. I mean, I, as you know, I see it all as, as pretty theatre, um, top level. These people, they're not batting with their own money, are they? As you, as you rightly said. But again, it would only be fair to say that. Obviously, look at some of Trump's donors as well, which you can continue. Um, sorry, you could include the Mellon family in there as well. So that says a lot about they're a very big um, banking family that go way back into this occult families. Blackstone Group's part of it as well. Um, so I mean, from both sides, you've got. Um, I think what we're kind of looking at here in my terms is that there's little issues along the way that they will squabble over and fight over and jock up a position. But when it comes to the big issues like sport of, of Israel um, and what they're going to do, Nikki Haley and Trump have always been on the same team as that. So um, and when it comes to his money, we have to look at, again, the Rothschilds bailed out. Um, Trump in the early 90s with Wilbur Ross. So that has to be taken into account. So, again, I think you, you're looking at someone like Trump, to me, is... If you strip away the politics of it, which is only a real later issue in his life, um, you're looking at someone who really is a kind of mobster in New York. He, he's a gangster. And I think any way of looking at that, that's exactly what he is. He's a gangster. He's um, casinos. He's uh, land. He's up there at the Palm Beach area. He's the one of the ones that own run the place. So I think we have to kind of, in my opinion, take a lot of this as theatre on one level but yes they will at the same time screw each other completely now it really depends on what difference on the grand scheme of any of these guys going in really makes and that's another conversation entirely so i mean you know far more of the ins and outs than i do on this political stuff i tend to look at the kind of occult symbology stuff and that's right, um, I, like, I like listening to you because <laughs> it does give you a different perspective yes absolutely and that's exactly what it's all about um yeah, it's on this show yeah, uh, we, we tend to have that, don't we? Um, there is a, a thing, Danny Roscoe, um, when we talk about judges and the fairness of, of things that are going on, uh, we have to remember the judge is the same judge who uh, turned around and said that uh, there was no, no case to go forward on Epstein Island with Prince Andrew. Uh, he's the exact same judge who's turned around and said that Donald Trump has to pay all this money to a woman that apparently um, he, uh, you know... Uh, did a five finger shuffle with uh, in a changing room um, and she never spoke out about it once. Um, she never spoke out about it once in 30 years, didn't scream at the time and can't remember the exact date of when that happened. Uh, that's that's worth uh, millions and millions of dollars, isn't it? Uh, and yet we have Prince Andrew who gave 12 million to a woman he'd never met before, apparently, and there is a photograph and there's no case to answer. This is a, a pure case of political um, lawyering, isn't it? And political ju uh, and judges being political rather than fair. Well, that's, that's exactly what it is, because we all know that the judges are the, the final whip of people who just won't allow the system to break them. What they'll do is they'll put them into the lawfare system and they know as soon as they enter that, the judge is going to favour whoever is going to A, give them what they what the judge wants, as in a higher up the, the club or, you know, maybe a different position or it's, it's going to be some other political means behind it. So once we get into this court system, you know, we, we're never going to win if we're against the establishment for that. But the Nikki Haley, my take on the Nikki Haley thing, why she won't back down and, and just concede because she's losing everywhere she goes, mm -hmm. is because the kill switch is still there. 
Now we got to remember Biden. They're still saying that he 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 won Michigan by like eighty percent or something like that. So they're still trying to pull him in and saying he's still a, a legitimate person to go against Trump. Yep. So if they want to take out both of them, they could just they could just get a, a MAGA person to take out uh, Biden, and then that will automatically take out Trump because obviously you know that that's how it goes in America. Because if anything to do a MAGA, it's going to be Trump orientated, and that should put him behind bars a little while, taking them both out. Nikki Haley on one side, Gavin Newsom on the other side. You've literally not even got an election anymore. No, right. exactly that. And the, the other thing uh, I think we have to uh, state as well is the unfairness of the the ruling against Trump, whether, whether you like Trump or not, the yeah. unfairness of it. Um, you know, uh, when you consider uh, that this guy literally turned around and said, uh, and, uh, and the woman as well. I mean, did she look at the fact that Prince Andrew gave somebody who'd never met 12 million and used the Me Too movement and went, I'll have some of that money as well. Me too, please. Um, I think he, he gave her our money, though. Prince Andrew gave her our yes. money because the Queen <laughs> yeah. allowed him to take our money. And there was not one person on the street protesting. And this is where I, I don't get our, our political leaning sometimes when people can see this type of stuff happening. But then all of a sudden it's under under the water. And that's why it's important people, you know, like Richard there with the with the symbology and things like that, because they can understand who's who's done what, you know, yes. what why it's not even out in the in the mainstream anymore. That's where you're just just before we move on to the next one. I think this is this is where I like Richard's perspective on things, because you know, you, you look at Trump at the political level, and he's he's the only show in town, not just for the United States, but the, the whole of the West, because the Europe and the UK needs Trump to win in order to try and take on the swamp and West Monster here, because there is nobody here fighting this fight. And then you look at the unfairness and the, the alignment against Trump from the, all the authorities, from the legal, from the political, from the financial. The only people that backed him in that court case were the banks that made money out of it. So, yeah. that's, that's, so then to get Richard's take on this layered on top of that, it really does, I hope for the audience, really does give some depth and perspective to what is going on around the world. Yeah. It, there is no choice. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you that, that I think he's a pain in the bum. I think he doesn't want to be told what to do. He won't be told what to do. He's a, he's a mobster and he's a pain in the bum in that system. But I don't genuinely think that he can really make much of a difference in that system because he will only be allowed to go so far. But he can cause a lot of trouble. I absolutely think he's a chaos monster in that. But you again, you look at the the Israel connection here. They're all pushing Israel. You come over to the UK, all of them pro Israel. All the pro, the Israel lobby. They don't have it in the US so much. They kind of have this this messianic cult behind them. But we have it over here, the pro Israel thing. So when you look at it, yeah, friends of Israel. really what friends of Israel, Infosys, Sunak. Look at all of them. It all heads in the same direction. Yes, I think they're jockeying for position now. The Rothschilds are dying off of who takes what. But I do think that. We have to be very, very cautious to think that none of them really care about us you in, think, in the long run. Do you think that, you know, looking at the alignment against Trump, do you not think that, and then you look at Bukele in El Salvador and what he's achieved, and they're basically telling them to F off, <laughs> to put it bluntly. And do you not think that, oh, I, I accept everything that you said, and, and I, you know, it's historical fact that some of the some of the backers are of Donald Trump over the years, but do, do, you, do you not feel that one man can make a difference at this level? I think one man can make a difference at this level if they're willing to be honest about why they're doing it and the state of play. If he come in and said, this thing is screwed, I ain't got a chance, um, and here's my backers, and these, I had to use these backers to even get in the race here, yeah, absolutely. The truth will, will pull it apart. It's whether someone's going to come in and tell the truth, and they'll take him out, and, and he is... He is a pain in their bum, but I don't think he can ultimately make a huge mu amount of difference. And I feel like he's, if you look at when it goes back, but the money goes back, look at New York. It's saturated in mob money. This is mob money. Um, and these are gangs. These are just gangs having a little pops at each other. Uh, they're all connected financially. And I think we need to be aware that, yes, these gangs might want to have their part of New York or the world, but they ultimately don't care about me and you or anyone else. And I just think we, we're we only really going to make a difference when we come to terms with that there's no one coming along to, to help us, really. Why would they? He's got his mansion. He's got his money. What does he care about me and you? Um, talking of uh, that that sort of area, let's talk about somebody who has sold his soul to the devil, uh, who's turned up. Uh, Which one? 
had yeah, well had it, the chief one uh, had his little trip to the border um by the way, I must give a shout out to the uh, speaker, Johnson, uh, because he was under enormous pressure uh, from Kamala Harris uh, and others uh, in a meeting and refused to re release the funds to Ukraine, uh, saying that America yeah. and the border was uh, more important. And he's absolutely right. Um, but Biden went uh, shuffling down to the border to try and score some, some sort of point. Um, Let's talk about the border, Richard, uh, because you've got some stuff on USA Mexico uh, that is very, very troubling indeed. Yeah, just a quick brief one. If you hear a child screaming in the background, it's our child. He's having a paddy, so I do apologise for <laughs> him having a paddy this morning. There's been lots oh, of paddies going. I think allowed. you can see by my eyes, there's a lot of paddies going on at the moment. Um, <laughs> Richard, if he's having a paddy, mate, he can always get a job on the panel at CNN. That's true. Yeah, I'm, I'm just what he's training for. That's why he's kind of actually bring down the alternative media by shouting in the background of my videos at the moment. This is subterfuge. Um, so Whitney Webb's written a great article about this, so I won't pretend to, that this is my information, but it's it's very, very worth going to look at. Looking at the US border um, now, now Trump did put up the wall. I was, I was bits of the wall, by the way, um, and I will give him that. I think I explained that last few weeks ago. I wasn't aware that some of it went up. Um, yeah. A video that's come out um, saying about the digital ID and the biometric system has come out last few days. Now, it turns out that this video is seven years old um, with Trump talking about it. Now, uh, people are going, well, it's seven years old. It doesn't matter. Well, actually, it does, because that means the uh, it's even worse than that case, because that means the technology and the systems are in place and ready to go. Now, the problem reaction solution part of this is that they had the problem, the US border at the time. They got the solution in place, but they didn't quite have the reaction they wanted from the world. Now, you're going to now because it's desperate times. Um, and this this shows how difficult this is, because when I start talking about kids going missing, you're kind of feeding into that reaction anyway. But now you're getting this global reaction here in the UK. We're flooded with with the immigration. They've done it the world over. People are going to be begging for this technology. Now, be aware. And I'm not putting this on Trump at all, although I do believe that he has an element of this. But what I'm saying is this technology is now in place and it just needs that reaction for people to go, yeah, we need it. We definitely need it because they always need your tacit compliance. Um, yeah. So Whitney Webb's come out and she's looked at the virtual wall border um, and it's thing called Andril, uh, Anne Durill um, is a company and it's basically connected to Planeteer, Peter Thiel and all of those guys, which is obviously connected to Elon Musk. Elon Musk now on 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 his ex is pushing, oh my God, how bad is the US-Mexico border? They'll take a truth and use it for their own purpose. Of course it is. Um, but now he's pushing, we need this technology in place, we need this technology in place. Now you're looking at biometrics across the board, you're looking at Starlink, you're looking at everything that he puts out chips in people's brains now he has the reason to roll this technology out and he's jumping on that bandwagon so be aware that Elon musk is very much connected to peter till um they're frenemies um they're base friends who pretend to be enemies they're not really um they were together play paypal and his um ex uh, banking systems came together um very early on in the days when elon musk miraculously had no hair apparently that grows if you get a lot of money Somehow it comes back. Um, so Peter Thiel and um, he he was Palantir, which is a CIA front. And we know part of DARPA. Google is DARPA, ARPA, the ARPANET, Alphabet agencies. They had a thing called Total Information Awareness that they seem to be want to be rolling out again, which is pre-crime. I think um, that's basically what it is. So just keep an eye on these guys. Peter Thiel, this guy is called... Um, Palmer Lucky, which is a great name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what was his name again? Palmer, Palmer, Palmer Lucky or Palmer Lucky? I'm calling him Palmer Lucky. Um, Oculus see... Rift is his technology. Yeah, it does sound like a pack of cigarettes. I, right. I could just see me going into, into a shop and saying, can I have 20 Palmer Luckies? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. For we'll lot, call you. This, shit, so. this stuff will call you can. <laughs> Well, it'll all cause you cancer in the long run anyway. Um, Audrey's is fun. So that's funded by Peter Thiel's founders. He also co founded Peter Thiel. Obviously, fun, um, Palantir had a stay in Rumble at the very start as well. So these guys together are the tech guys behind it. You're looking at all of these guys connected. So again, look into Anduril. So it's spelled A N D U R I L. Um, that's the company that's pushing out this technology at the moment. And um, the virtual ball, uh, border wall. Uh, look at Whitney Webb's. Uh, article for more um, information on that she's great palmer lucky make a note of that name peter teal elon musk 
they're all in it together. And a guy called John Lonsdale, um, and he was a Palantir co-founder and he invested in Anderil as well. So these guys are the guys that are pushing now, prodding you down this lane of the to get the reaction because the yeah. problem is there clearly and it is a genuine problem. They've got the solution in place. It was in place seven years ago and Trump was crying about it then. But obviously, I don't think they quite got the reaction they needed at the time. Um, and make of that what you will in terms of whatever Trump um, was involved in that. But also um, look at now because now they need your reaction and you need yeah. all three. Like everything, it's always the trinity. Always the problem, solution. need the reaction, need a solution. Now you're going to get this reaction because everybody's over here in the UK. Oh my God, black people like yeah. over here and, and like, you know, all, all sorts. It's just ridiculous stuff. Islam's over here. And let's blame all blame Islam. Let's blame people with um with a different colour from they're they're fostering that in the UK, as you can see, really, really awful at the moment, especially yeah. by, by via things like GB News and these apparently alternative medias that are just yeah. fostering yeah. this awful, ridiculous childlike thing that we we should be yeah, way this, beyond. This, yeah, this goes back to the UN, United Nations agenda. Not only the population agenda, but the pitching of groups against each other, which has been going on for certainly my entire adult lifetime in the, across all media forms. Yeah. Now yeah. it's coming to a head. And no, people like us, none of us really care. As long as we're nice to each other, that's all you really yeah. care. And we know that, but they managed to somehow foster people into these ridiculous race wars, yeah. and um, and that's what's happening. So just be aware that you're being used and abused. As per usual. Will do. Uh, we'll great enough, Richard. Uh, Danny, let's get your take on that. Is the is the uh, should we say the prevention or, or the cure uh, worse than the actual problem, or uh, you know, is Elon Musk uh, and what they've got coming up for us is that more of a problem in your eyes uh, than the actual uh, immigration crisis at the moment, Danny? Well, it's, 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 it's like I, I coughed earlier on and I thought you could hear it, so I'm just testing. Um, I think it's going to be a lot worse. It, there's two bits to it there's the short term, there's the long term. The short term in my lifetime, it's going to be the immigration situation now that's coming in, uh, you know, the, the demographics of our, our country, how our society is. But the bigger picture now, Elon Musk has got Twitter and he's got Neuralink and he's got the, the star satellite system, and now he wants to get into these type of of technologies, you know, the, the social credit side of it and all that. He's very powerful because we all know data is worth much more than gold and, and anything else because they know exactly what you're doing, when you're doing, and they can now manipulate you. And especially if they give you a neural link for very, very cheap to be a, a, a trial tester, because it seems a lot of people like to be testing new technologies. You know, yeah. we've seen it over the last couple of years. So from that, I think he, I think he can, he can turn it both ways. He can be good for the people, which he's not going to be doing it. He'll be sending it off to the globalists, and we're going to be even more controlled and oppressed than we've ever seen and thought about. But that's probably going to be our children. Danny, Danny while, while we're on the subject, uh, I've got a little video here uh, which shows. Now that sort of mirrored all around the all around the world, uh, all around Europe. Uh, this is this is getting kind of crazy, isn't it, uh, Danny? You you. This is getting kind of crazy and it's getting correct, correct, crazier because, you know, people are not allowed to speak out about it. Even me, I'm being called a white supremacist now, um, even more so because I speak out about it. But the, the, the craziest thing is these people from Congo and Africa, they're fighting age males. They're from tribes. They know how to fight with their hands. They know how they know how to injure people and cut their bits off and, and whatever. Then they're desensitized to all that against us. We, 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 we need an army to protect us or the police. They, there's no going to be no protection if we can't fight how they're going to be doing to us if they don't get what they want they're on europe soil we're going to be done for as well and that could be a people could say this is a, this is a race war that's going to be happening and whatnot no it's simple they're not going to leave europe and they're going to want what they what they say they want and if it's not happening we've seen it over at the hague what's possible with a few people yeah look at that and that's probably lampedusa well, Think about this, you know, take that. This is a deliberate policy. This is the United Nations population replacement policy. And if you read that, they want to put 850 million people from around Africa, the Middle East, in, in Asia, into Europe and the United States. Europe and North America, I should say. 
the cultural clashes that are going to come from that, uh, uh, that's where they will get their civil wars from, it, you know, linked to the global war that they're trying to start. But you know, these are these are all cause and effect. So what, what Danny's just highlighted and illustrated there is that they don't really care. What, what this is going to happen, all these politicians like Rishi Sunak send them to Rwanda, we'll do this, we'll stop the boats. They won't stop the boats because they, they, there's no intention of stopping the boats. And bear in mind, just with, as with the, the vaccines, these people won't necessarily get the, um, the biometric testing that they're talking about on the border. That's for us. What they will get, they will get the protection of the United Nations. So they don't have to be vaccinated because the, 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 the um, immunity from prosecution, whatever it's called, doesn't extend to beyond your state citizens. So if you're, if you're under the protection of the United Nations, they can't be vaccinated by the government. They can't be mandated or even asked if they want the vaccination. That's going to be exactly the same with these biometrics. You, know, you cannot enforce it onto people under the protection of the United Nations. So that's for you. That's for us. That's just for us. And so the story, this is where Richard really has a great perspective on things because that they're talking about it on the border. They're talking about it with immigrants into the into Europe, but they can't legally do that. They, yeah. they, can't, they, can, they can implement it on the border and then impose it up because you then can't get in the shops. And, and if you remember a couple of weeks, uh, even a week ago, they were talking about um, access to shops being, being through this biometrics. And if you go all the way back to um, Aaron, I forgot his name, uh, an American businessman, film producer, did the trading places. He talked about a, a, a meeting he had with David Rockefeller, and he openly talked about chipping people. Think Neuralink, think mm -hmm. Starlink, think all of these things. And then you wrap the biometrics across the top of that, and you wrap that into the CBDCs, and you now have no freedom, no perfect, no privacy, no transparency. You are whether you whether, whether like us, us four here. Even with our resistance to this, you, you will reach a point where you cannot resist, where you have to comply. So we've got to stop this now. And that includes stopping the immigration and reversing it. It means stopping the technology rollouts. It means stopping the, 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 the destruction of our society, because we all live in this society. Yeah, yeah I think. Can I just add that? That yep. just to the what there, I just want to quickly add though, you that video there, look at the title in the wording. Um, it says under siege, and I, I absolutely agree with um and what, what you guys are saying, especially Danny, what he was saying there, this is a truth. So what yeah. they are able to do is they take, take a situation and they treat two sets of people differently and clash them together. Yeah. Now, we've got to find a common ground with these people because these people are coming from a place where they are treated terribly and then we're treated terribly and they're just clashing us both together. The yeah. only way, apart from any of this, and I completely agree with what Danny says, this is they are fighting age people. They've been yeah. gaslit into fighting us, not the people there. The only way to stop this is to point out who... Yeah, is, is to point out who are gaslighting them and who are gaslighting us and come together and turn around and yep. look at them. Absolutely. Because we're both being manipulated to kill each other off. It's a mutually destructive war. And this is the only way That's why true. this information is so important is they're not the enemy, we're not their enemy, but we're being made to fight each other. And, yeah. and yes, they are fighting agents. We haven't got a clue. But these guys are also not going to... It doesn't matter if they go away. There'll be another lot. And um, we're being pitted against each other. That's just what colour revolution is. That's what George Soros has been doing Absolutely. his whole entire Nazi life. We need to stop having a get, being gaslit into wars with each other. And yes, that's going to take a certain amount of trust with two sets of groups. And but okay. the only way to do that is go look, look, look. We're being pitted against you guys. We don't want to die. You don't want to die. We don't want to fight these guys and making billions off of all of our suffering. Let's turn yeah. around. And it's the only way to do this is to point this out. Is that we're being just, made to, to kill each other off. And and yeah. that's why this work is so important. Let's, let's, let's find a common ground here with these people. It's not their fault and it's not our fault. So whose fault is it? It, it sounds like it's a lot of billionaires' fault to me. And this, this is why I always talk about the United Nations agendas and the World Economic Forum, which is why I always sort of link these things back to depopulation. This is a depopulation agenda. We'll move them from Africa to Europe where you'll all kill each other in the little civil wars, We'll get you fighting with the Russians over the global war. We'll nuke everything in global war. We'll reduce reduce food capacity because of the climate hoax. We'll close farms. 
and we'll fill you full of vaccines and biotechnologies that you will be transhumanized for the 500 million people that are left. And that's yeah, why yeah. for me, all of this, what we, the importance of what we do is to highlight all of this and link it back together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And very quickly, I want to say on that, uh, if you don't believe anything that we're saying here, just take a look around you. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples. And I've done this before. There are 580 million people that exist on less than two pounds a day in the world. OK, uh, very, very simply, if you want to raise them out of poverty, help them in their own country. Now, 580 million people, uh, less than two pounds a year, they multiply at 40 million a year. Uh, therefore, taking one million into your country doesn't solve a bloody thing. Uh, what it do does solve is a population replacement. How about you help them in their country, raise their standard of living so everybody's the same? And you know why they won't? Because they don't want to do that. Wake up. Oh. And, and I'm going to give you another one example. Last, one, one last thing. So, sorry, Warren. Carry on. Yeah, one, one last thing here, and then you know you'll say, Lee, um, very, very simply, when we're talking about the integration of people, as Richard was saying there, uh, Russia did it. We have Jews, we have Muslim, we have Muslims, and we have Christians, and they're all Russian first, faith second. Nobody gets uh, done for their faith. It's very strictly, uh, you can practice whatever faith you like, as long as you are part of the country. Lee? Uh, I was just to follow up on that. If you go back to the 70s, in the 60s, Africa was not in crisis. You know, it, it, the Middle East was not in crisis. They dressed like we did. They behaved like we did. They could provide all of, and, and South America is a great example. And, you know, the, the, the Diary of an Economic Hitman, CIA, how they've interfered and deliberately crashed economies to create this world of dependent people. And now it's the, the next phase of this is to move yeah. all of those dependent people, all of that brutality that's been created because those societies were large i know there's always been problems always wars but those largely stable societies in, in africa in, the, in south america in the in the middle east this has been created by the same people that we're talking about now the rothschilds and the soroses of this world yeah mm -hmm. we'll come on to the rothschilds um uh, and people like that um let's talk about one of the lesser uh, people, shall we, uh, in one of the lesser, shall we say, uh, warmongers that are out there. And we have it from our uh, French military intelligence source, who, who is absolutely brilliant, that they are looking now, because they've been kicked out of Africa, uh, that they are looking to get the uh, Eastern European states uh, to go and open a second front. Uh, and uh, Macron's been very, very vocal on this, Lee, hasn't he? Hmm. Yeah, Macron basically said that uh, that... It, they, they've not ruled out the use of NATO troops, Western troops, he used, pardon me, Western troops in Ukraine. And he was very careful to decouple NATO from Western troops. And also other reports about a bilateral approach to this, where Britain may send troops, France may send troops, Germany may send troops, but not as NATO. So there's, there's, there's a lot of um, skullduggery and game playing going on here. And, you know, the, the, it's probably worth, Warren, just touching on the five steps of war here because, you know, we're right in the middle of them. Um, well, Lee and I have been banging on for the last two years, uh, last two and a bit years, uh, about what they were planning uh, through, through the French government, through NATO, through the US, and the five steps of war. And we, I, I was very, very... Uh, <laughs> uh, people are beginning to realise, and the five steps of war is, first of all, uh, let's start a conflict. So you start the conflict. Uh, the second step is to get NATO boots on the ground. Well, we, we've got that. You know, let's, let's not beat around the bush here. There are many, many special forces crawling around inside of uh, Ukraine as we speak. And there we have uh, a senior Germany robust Emmanuel Macron. Um, but a senior European defence official said Macron's statement about creating deterrence and ambiguity towards Russia Everyone knows there are Western special forces in Ukraine. They're just not acknowledging it officially. Uh, and that is absolutely true. And our sources are telling us there are at least six or seven different countries with special forces units in there. Now, that is, of course, to try and get that. And at the moment, we haven't got NATO uh, having an outright conflict. So we don't have the, the box ticked for NATO go in. So what happens is Macron then gets the Eastern uh, side 
of the, you know, in Eastern Europe uh, states that are part of NATO to go in if they get fired upon, because they're not going to commit, uh, USA, Britain, uh, Germany, France, they're not going to commit troops in. It's absolutely not going to happen. What they're going to do is get some of the eastern states, and Armenia is probably the prime candidate, uh, given that France have moved in there, to start a second front. Then you have NATO troops, that is step three, being fired upon. Then they fire upon Russia. Macron has already called for that fourth step of firing on Russia. Then you're at step five. Out and out. That, that, that goes to the, the weapons systems that they're supplying to Armenia. They, they have capability to fire into Russia now. Oh, they will be when they arrive. Yes, they do. And then and then what you have is an open war between NATO and Russia. And then how long is it, once somebody gains the upper hand, how long is it? Russia have already promised that if NATO troops on the ground, there's a difference. NATO troops on the ground and firing. OK, so NATO troops on the ground, what NATO will try and do is get them fired on uh, so they can have an excuse to start launching stuff into Russia. And then the fifth step, we all know what that is. And nobody on the planet, apart from the lunatics who are in charge of us, uh, want that. Um, we, 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 uh, uh, Macron has tried to uh, walk it back because all the Nordic states uh, and many of the Eastern states Lee, have turned around and said, uh, oh, oh, no, we don't want we don't want this. So what Macron's now come up with now, he can't get um, th that through is uh, this little gem from him. Thirdly, we all agree on the fact that we do want to fall into a war against Russia, and we want to keep control over the escalation of the conflict as we saw from the beginning of the conflict. So, uh, knowing all of this and knowing that we need uh, and how we can do more, more in terms of budget, more in terms of military equipment, more in terms of capacity building, and through bilateral agreements like some of us have already signed. Not good. Wow. That's oh. really interesting. Sorry, Warren, but I just want to add to that. Add to that because yesterday he just talked about um investments, money. We want your <laughs> money. They always want your money. But yesterday, 27th of February, Qatar invest 10 billion euros in key sectors of the French economy. What a surprise, eh? Um yeah. Um, France and Qatar have sealed a strategic partnership under which Qatar have agreed to channel 10 billion euros, which is $10.85 billion, into startups and investment funds, I would say military, um, in France between 2024 and 2030. 2030, there you go, agenda 2030. The French president said in a statement, investments to the mutual benefit of both countries. <laughs> well, just better to, yeah, I bet to dig it for that. Or we'll target key sectors, which is the people, ranging from energy transition, semiconductors, aerospace, artificial intelligence, digital health, hospitality, and culture. There won't be a culture, everyone will be dead. The investment was announced um, as the guy that I can't pronounce, I'm not even gonna buy, I'll call him Bob. Qatar's ruling Emir started a two-day visit to France on Tuesday, his first state visit in the country since the accession. Now, Qatar, obviously, we all know that's Hamas headquarters are in Qatar. We also know that um, Elon Musk was in Qatar recently using their national funds to fund um, some fund his purchase of, I think it's X, they use national funds there and Saudi Arabian funds. Also, his picture with Jarrus Kushner there, who's a Habadnik and obviously son-in-law of uh, Donald Trump. Qatar are now giving the money that he's just asked for to create World War Three. Now, guys, you really need to start paying attention. This money is, they're not asking you. They're saying that we need it whilst it's already coming funneling in their back pocket. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a sleight of hand that's already been done. That was yesterday. We'll yeah. go quickly to Danny and then we'll go to the league. Uh, Danny, uh, Macron here uh, trying to get all the states involved. Uh, and Stoltenberg has also been coming out with absolute nonsense as well. Uh, these and, and Stoltenberg is due to leave at the end of the year. Just while we're on it, Sweden have said no to going uh, to troops going in. So what's the point in them joining NATO uh, if they're not going to provide troops when asked? And the other thing we have to remember is that the USA are building a naval base and an air base in Sweden, and Sweden actually get to name the next head of NATO after Stoltenberg finishes his year out. Danny uh, Macron's uh, lining all this up, isn't he? It looks that way. It looks like he's lining up all the cards, and that's probably why, again, the um, the, the ex-UN 
embassy in Nikki Hay, uh, ambassador in Nikki Haley, is still on the still on the cards. But it also could be a switcheroo because in that what um, Richard was saying, it said semiconductors, and you know Vivek Ramaswamy was saying that he would protect um, the semiconductor uh, Taiwan from the semiconductors uh, from China taking over that type of of stuff. So it looks like a lot of things are in play. And France are trying to be the, the, the people behind it, the pioneers as such, like they did with Africa. Yeah. Lee? Well, France has been very central to a lot of what's gone on in Ukraine, in Armenia, in Serbia, and, and, and in Niger in Africa, amongst other places in Africa. So, that, yeah, they are very central. But I think the significance for me is I've got a couple of stories that I'm going to show you in a second. If we go back a couple of weeks when we were all revving up for war and we were all going to war with Russia and we were all talking about conscription and, uh, and, and you know, five billion extra for the MOD. And that five billion extra was over two years. And then Sunak visited Kiev and gave two and a half billion of that five billion in aid to Ukraine, which means selling them arms for two and a half billion. Now, what's happened since then with Macron, he's sort of brought it to a head with, you know, Western troops in, operating in Ukraine to then a public backlash. Macron makes this statement yesterday. There's been pushback from governments saying, whoa, hold on a minute. But then if you then look at some of the stories that are, that are being in the media, there's this one, the MOD to be denied, denied funding boost in the budget, stating that they've just been re they've just received, and this is in the Telegraph, that they've, they've just had this five billion pounds of additional funding. Well, if we're going to planning to go to war with Russia, you know, you would you need a lot more than two percent of your GDP, and much, much of which is spent on pensions and GCHQ and Bolton Down and everywhere else as well comes out of the same budget. So there's that. So you've got grad shaps asking for more money and not getting it. Pico shaps, yeah, yeah, and then you've got this really serious wind back for them with. Um, just find the story before I share. Is it, that's our old friend, is it? This 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 story is Britain's is secure. The armed forces boss plays down conscription fears. If you remember the backlash from the conscription story a couple of weeks ago, yeah. not just in the UK, but across the West and the United States as well. The United States is, is has a recruitment crisis within its military, main, 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 partly because of they forced everybody out that was a patriot, and secondly because the woke nature, and we've, we've spoke about the woke nature of the British military now and the Ministry of Defence and some of the stupidity that's gone on in, the, well, the, in all three arms of the military. And now you've got this, the uh, head of the military, Admiral Sir Tony, Tony Radikin. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry? <laughs> our friend Tony. <laughs> our, our, our good friend Tony, Uncle Tony. <laughs> you know, head of the armed forces saying that appeared to take a swipe at, at army chiefs as he insisted Britain is secure and he said, we are not on the cusp of war with Russia and stressed no one is talking about conscription. That's a complete 180 from what they were talking about only a couple of weeks ago. And that's why, what, you know, what, what Macron has said, Macron is, is almost like a trying to reinvigorate this whilst everybody else, both at a national level and at a military level, is, is winding back on it. And it goes to what we were talking about the other day, Warren, between you and I, where the West is not ready for war. And it will take three or four or five years to prepare for war with China and to or to prepare for war with Russia over Ukraine, which is they've not done. They, they're so disjointed with what they're planning. Plus, there's the political dynamic, which is why I think that they'll, they'll, they're still trying to do it at the Macron level, at the Taiwan level. That the you know they're still trying to start war because they need it because they, they've initiated the collapse of our financial systems. They initiated the collapse of society. They started the mass immigration, mass migration. They started all of these big mechanisms, all of these big plans and stories, but they're not ready to do it. And this is why I go back. This is why I really like Richard's perspective and Richard's comment when I finish this, because I go back to Trump. Trump, you know, it should have been Hillary. They should have been prepared over that four years, and they weren't. Yeah. Trump sort of changed everything. And that's why I have a little bit of faith and hope that maybe Trump and Bukele and Orban and others can, can actually make this change. I yes. absolutely accept Richard's historical and the facts that Richard puts out. But I, I, I'm a, I hope, I'm a positive 
Well, that's half full on this one, but... Yes, you know. we'll, we'll try. And, and the other thing I would like to, I'd like to take odds with uh, Tony Raddick in there, uh, that Britain is secure. Uh, no, it isn't. You've only got to have enough money to climb in a dinghy. Um, there we go. Uh, it's really, really straightforward. Uh, Richard, your take on uh, Macron and what he's leading is trying to lead us into. And in a minute, we're going to show you uh, when he's talking, because uh, Lee was talking about recruitment of soldiers. Uh, we're going to take you through three videos in Ukraine. We're going to take you through the least, uh, shall we say, uh, what's, the, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, the least horrible uh, to start with, and we're going to build through, and, and then we're going to come to that. Uh, but first, Macron, Richard. Well, um, again, Macron is a Rothschild um, asset. He's um, uh, in two thousand eight. He was joining Rothschilds. He told his friends, his friends, they are prestigious investment banks. So then, the thirty year old civil servant at the time was um, would was warned it could scupper a future career in politics. Well, no, obviously it's the opposite when you're with the Rothschilds. It might yeah. actually look bad. I think that's what they were trying to tell you, um, Emmanuel, but, um, which was a soft call porn, I think, from the 90 days. <laughs> um, you're conscious. Uh, so, yeah, basically he's a, he's a Rothschild asset. And uh, But, again, let's say let's bring up that, the, as you say, Trump, as I say, Trump um, did have... Uh, were bailed out by Wilbur Ross in the early 90s. So we just have to be really, really understanding. But again, it doesn't mean they're not fighting from within. And I, I accept the fact that, that Trump is a chaos engine and he may be working with some in, in a way that wants a different type of outcome. But I just think putting any of our faith in any of these guys is asking for trouble. We really need to take our uh, take it into our own hands. So Macron is a Rothschild asset um, and he's pushing across the same agenda as everyone. And I, I think a really important thing is to, to kind of come to terms with the fact that countries, flags, borders matter nothing to these people when it comes to the end of it. They don't see it as countries against each other i don't believe i i think putin's a more nationalist than anyone but again i think he, how far up that goes um so yeah macron's a rothschild asset he's a rothschild banker um yeah. has been so just, are they losing it are they losing the faith the, the head of the rothschilds the, the the daddy rothschild just passed away so maybe there is a, a gap here where we can get in it's all falling apart but something's got to give soon do, 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 do you accept the concept that they're behind schedule and therefore they're not ready for these things and they've gone too early. I, I think that's a really good point, especially about the four years. Could have could he been a little chaos or cog in the wheel have gone in there for four years, Trump, just to mess things up, slow things down. Absolutely oh. possible. Absolutely possible. And even if it wasn't intentional, it has done so, absolutely. Um yeah. and so there's that little bit of hope. But again, I think we need to come back and take it into our own hands and go, these guys they function in a different world. They don't know what it's like to get up at six in the morning and go to work in a shop or go to like look in the bank and go, oh my God, I can't actually afford to pay them, pay the, the council tax this month. Probably don't even know what council tax is. These they, they function in a different stratosphere as we do. Yeah. So they their brains aren't wired like ours to, to worry about the same thing. So when you have Elon Musk on, on spaces talking about brain chips in people and how it's our fear of this AI technology that's causing the problems in the first place, you've got a guy that's mentally deranged because he's been brought up in a way like a cult that they don't see the world like us. So their problems aren't like us. They don't need to worry about the money. He might be worrying about 350 million but that probably isn't. That's like worrying about can we afford an extra pack, pack, like a packet of crisps this week. There is nothing to these people, and I think we kind of project our own daily issues onto these people that live in a different reality than we do. And maybe that's something to take into consideration. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Danny, uh, Liam, Liam, Richard are correct. Um, they they are behind schedule. Um, but Macron uh, has he suffered uh, from a case of premature escalation here? <laughs> I don't think so because he, he can always he can always roll back a little bit more. These things seem to be, you know, they seem to be interchangeable. When we start winning or, or when we start getting cottoned on to what's happening, things other things happen to take us away, and then that's fed back into it again. Um, so, yeah, I, I think. It's, it's it's these ones. I think that, like Richard was saying, I think they are trying to juggle into um, who's going to get the power play because there's a lot of billionaires about at the moment. There's a lot of people who could take over a Rothschild's place. And after we've got the demon ones gone, that you know that that are coming down now, we've got the younger ones who are going to be a lot less fierce and they're going to be a lot more manipul manipulatable. 
Um, so yeah, it's all it's all to pay for for the billionaires. And again, like Richard saying, they they don't know what we feel like. That we're just pawns in their games. You know, yeah. they don't care if they take away a whole continent of people. You know, it's not going to matter to them. They're not going to be like, oh no, this is a because they'll be like, oh, we just grab them from over here. We'll, they'll yeah. come. We'll just grab a whole lot of Chinese and bang them in there, and it's all done. Um, um, it's absolutely spot on, mate. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to show you a series of three videos. So we're going to take you through. Uh, recruitment, and now this is happening everywhere. Uh, we're going to take you through recruitment and show you exactly uh, what's been happening there. We're also going to give you some testimony, uh, and we're going to play them all back to back. Uh, we're going to show you some testimony from an an Adivka survivor who spent seven days uh, hiding in a house because his own side was shooting at him because he was trying to retreat. This is a Ukrainian soldier. And then we're going to show you what the Ukrainian soldiers have been doing to uh, Russian uh, soldiers who've been surrendering during the battle. And we will also uh, quite clearly tell you uh, that the last video that you see, the gentleman, the two men who took the video reported it up the chain of command. And from our Ukrainian source, we now know that they have died mysteriously in battle. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to show you the very first one, uh, which is the recruitment that is still going on to this day in Ukraine. Well, so that's the recruitment wing. Uh, we're now going to go on to uh, the next video, uh, which is uh, a, a little bit, you know, is a little bit uh, long, shall we say, um, but it is worth listening to because this is very, very important that you listen to this guy. Uh, and it is, uh, as I say, about four or five minutes long, but we're going to play the entirety of it so you can see exactly what has been happening. Two soldiers in Adi. <laughs> Мы не знали, что нас отправили на Авдеевку, мы знали, что мы идем в Донецкую область. А что именно в Авдеевку и на Авдеевский напрямок, то вот, вот уже за день до того, как вы уже мали, мали отправлять нас в Авдеевку. Все очень быстро случилось, не могу сказать. Заезжали ночью, толком не, не видел ничего, а уже днем, то, как слышал уже, то страшно было. Ну, взрывы со всех сторон. Страшно. У дома еще все как провожали, все так плакали, как будто чувствовали, что что-то может случиться такое. И я не знаю, чьи моя часть передала какие-то данные, чьи я там жив, чьи в плену, чьи умер. Ну, взагалі, я, я не знаю, знают ли они, чьи я жив, чьи в плену, не знаю. Пошел штурм, всех убили, я убежал через окно. Побежал в сторону к своим, бежал по улице, в надежде где-то спрятаться или добежать к своим. Когда добегал, услышал стрельбу со стороны своего подразделения и забежал, спрятался в, в дом. И там сидел, ждал. У меня не было рации, связи никакой. Я не знал путей отступления, мне не было доведено. Ничего не знал, что делать. Знал просто, в какую сторону, с какой стороны меня привезли, и все. Не знал, что делать. Сидел так семь с половиной, с половиной дней. Очень замерз. Хотел э, сдаться сразу же, але, але боялся, потому что э, по мне уже стреляли свои. Я, я хотел выжить. Хотел выжить. И вот ждал я, сидел, молился. И настал такой момент, я услышал, что возле дома уже разговаривают на русском, выстрелили с автомата, и, и 
Я понял, что это, это, этот момент настал, и, и зашли они в дом, и я крикнул, не стреляйте, я сдаюсь, я без оружия, я хочу жить. Ну, и меня взяли в плен. За 7 дней, да, я замерз, еды не было. Нашел в этом доме баклажку воды 5-литровую. Ну, попробовал, вода была нормальная, пил. Но потом был мороз, и она замерзла, и ну, дня три я точно ничего не пил. Когда сдался в плен, меня, скажем так, ну, взяли в плен, не, не знаю, как подобрать слово, ну, красиво там, ну, меня не били, не били, я просто сдался, меня связали, обыскали, я не знаю, что это было за подразделение, это, наверное, мне и не надо это знать. Завели, все нормально. Рассказал, что к чему. Мне кофе заварили, печеньку дали, ну, перекусил. И все такое, ну, хорошее ставление было. После того, как попил кофе, ко мне подошел медик и спросил, чи, чи потребую я какой-то медицинской допомоги. Сказал, что что-то у меня нога, я показал, увидел он, что это пулевое, сквозное, а это такое незначное, боком прошло, он мне обработал рану, сказал, что все будет добре. Uh, and it is, uh, I will turn around and say viewer discretion uh, on this one, um, because it really isn't uh, very nice whatsoever. Um, as we can clearly see in this video, and remember that the two people who took this video, uh, one of them uh, who was talking about we should report it, we should report it, uh, is the words you can hear in this video, are both now dead. Um, there is clearly a war crime here. Uh, not only have they shot them, uh, surrendering soldiers, but they've made sure that they've executed them straight after. <laughs> uh, doesn't become any clearer than that, does it? Oh, Danny, we've lost Danny. No, that, that's, that's a war crime. It's against the Geneva Convention. They were clearly surrendering. Hands up. Those soldiers need to be found and they need to be arrested and need to be charged. And the people that reported it need to be commended. And then we need to find out who killed them. Uh, Richard, your, your take on everything you've just seen there. Well, it's, when you're talking about the Trumps of the world, you're talking about the Macros of the world. This is the real reality of the stupid mama language fucking games they're playing this is yep. what it actually means this is people's children people's that guy will never be the same one survived he's right he's his mind's gone this is the reality of the games that these politicians are playing so quite frankly then to even be in that position of standing up there on the podium and ask people to vote for you it, it's insane this way this world works absolutely insane and this is the reality of what they're doing with their little porn play moves mm. this is what they're like and they they block this reality out you don't find these guys macrons and trumps ever they're not going to be anywhere near that stuff they, they never even they were never born into a world where that was a possibility either so <laughs> it's, got to, it's got to stop this is this is, has to stop this has to stop Yes, there's always going to be conflicts in the world and arguments. There's always going to be, but you, the Indonesia, um, indigenous people didn't live like this barbaric way, and this is the barbaric no. system that we're living in, and they're all victims. Every single one of the, Yes, the soldiers that shot the other soldiers are all victims. The only victims, the only people that are not victims of this system are the billionaires, and this needs to. we all need to stop killing each other for their silly, psychopathic, psychotic games, and that that's all I'm getting from watching that is that this is what these are people's children. This is these are children. These are someone's kids. These are someone's grandparents. Yeah. These are someone's. These are people, and um, um, that that's just sad. Just it's just awful. And no other words how, it. How, do, how do we change it, Richard? How do we how do we stop the billionaires? I mean, I, I talk about the things we can do at a, at a local level. You know, with with our local food chains and folk, local food, and you know, vote for 
pick your own candidates and vote for them and ignore the past. But what can we really do? With these billionaires are embedded, the systems and processes, the civil services are all embedded. I did the bane because it's, I, I, I can't, I'm 43 years old. What do I know? But all I can say is that we need to see people as human beings and, and realize that Satanism, the satanic, Satanism is a mindset. It's a way of seeing the world. It's a way of behaving in the world. We need, these morals and values need to come back and understand that when you harm someone else, it takes a bit of you away or two. And you've got to yeah. live with that. That's going to harm you psychologically later on. These people are so broke, these politicians that they don't have a chance of coming back that's sad in itself don't More allow yourself to become part of break yourself by hurting other people to, to, to this way um realize that when you hurt someone else you hurt yourself and, and it's the only way to do it it's it's a very simple psychology that, uh, that, that it has to come back to morals and values it yeah. has to come back to a very simple break down the system in terms of living in small villages and, and, and towns again that that's a practical thing but morals yeah. and values, what can we agree on? It, it um, really has to come back to a psychology. Uh, uh, very much along that lines of uh, the, the psychology and the, the psychopathy of these people. Uh, I'm going to very quickly, before I go on to this, I'm going to uh, uh, just mention something about Navalny. Uh, now, we have a picture of Navalny, I believe, Lee. Um, there, is a, there is a story going about. Um, <coughs> forgive me. Um, he was jammed five times. He died of a blood clot. Uh, no, the Russians didn't kill him. Bang, bang on and bang on. Uh, now we have them trying to spin the narrative again. Uh, Navalny was close to being freed in prison, a swap between Russia and West ally. Uh, it is complete. Uh, Andrew Osborne and Philip Lebedev, uh, I have to tell you, you were completely uh, talking nonsense because I've spoken to people uh, very close uh, to uh, our sources in Russia and also our sources in Ukraine, and there was no such thing was going to take place. So that is complete nonsense. But this is, they will publish this, Richard, but they will ban us for showing those videos that we just showed, which are the real story, aren't they? And mainstream media is utterly, utterly complicit. In what is it, in this genocide that not only is just going on, uh, it's going on in Gaza and other places as well. Uh, but this, the brutality of this war, uh, and, and you and you wonder why the Germans, the French, uh, the British, and the United States are not going to put people in there, and they want other countries to go in there. And many countries are walking away from it because when you see this, and they have seen this, and they know it's going on, they know that there's our citizens are going to die if they go into Ukraine. Yeah, and that's what we need to do, these politicians. Are you telling me, go up there and tell me that you do not want war and you will not send anyone to war and the fact is that this is ridiculous. Condemn all all of it. Then I'll listen to you and then go in and in the next first, and you should have an out clause. If these guys within the first year don't live by what they said they were going to get in by, they need to be thrown out and, and fined and never allowed to practice politics again. They need to be held accountable. What yeah. I don't I don't need you to go in there and to tell me which countries go out to war with this war and, and fighting this one. I need you to stop. This needs to stop, and it, and it needs to stop before it, it is way and it's very close to being too late. And um and that's what we need to come to. Like we chat about these things, but really we're just a bunch of blokes don't want our kids to be <laughs> in a war, yeah. hurt, and that's all it's... it really comes down to. The rest of it is just messing about, and it annoys me like. We do all this research and I can look into the, the Rothschilds and I can look into Satanism and I can look into Habad Lubavitch and the Kabbalah and that lot. But really what it comes down to is, are oh, you going to treat me like a decent human being? I will do the same for you. This, it's very simple. This is the importance of the stories we touched on earlier with the backlash, public backlash against conscription, where people said no in vast numbers across the West. We're not going to one. We're not, we're not, effectively, we're not going to fight for you. Yeah, and that, that I think that message has got to have got through to some of those idiots that think they run the world because they don't. Yeah, they don't. They're just no. the front men. David's been saying for years and years and years, and and, and David's always stuck to by it is non-compliance. I will not take part in your game. That's the only way. Don't get on the board. Don't get into these things. I completely. Once you're in it, the ego gets in, and you want to win, and you want to be right, and you want to be the first person to come up with this information, and that's my information. You come like a bloody golem. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It it's really not. doesn't matter. You're not here for very long. You're going to leave the place a better state than when you come in it or a worse state. 
that's all that to me that always matters. I'm 43 years old and all I've ever learned is don't be a dick. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And, and those that are being, it is good, though, I think that we point out those that are being dicks. Uh, and it is very, very important. Uh, and, and talking of uh, dicks, uh, talk to me of Sunak and Keir Starmer, Lee. Well, we posted the story the other day, or we, rather, we talked around Keir Starmer and Lindsay Hoyle. Uh, and we said that Hoyle should really be resign or be fired as the speaker for the, the 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 way in which the SNP motion to debate Gaza went. Well, there is now stories that are being put about that uh, that that perhaps that should be the case. You just find it. Yeah. Um... And, you know, Keir, Keir Starmer under fire. Labour leader could face investigation for pre pressuring Lindsay Hoyle ahead of the ceasefire vote. Now, th this is. This is corruption at the highest level because we we, we spoke yesterday about the manner in which that the Keir Starmer got one of his MPs to deliberately delay push um, filibuster filibuster the the debate so that it ran out of time before they could actually vote on it and to Keir Starmer again this is the prospective next prime minister we're talking about who's corruptly using party party pressure party political pressure and the system to avoid a vote, which is basically a humanitarian, to Richard's last point, a humanitarian vote, stop the shooting and the killing in Gaza. And Keir Starmer, through his party's machine, A, stopped the, stopped the vote, and B, put pressure on the, the speaker, who's a Labour MP, who should, but he should be a speaker, completely independent, and he's demonstrated that he's not. So now there's beginning to some backlash. I mean, this is GB News, so it's not exactly the left-wing mainstream, but it's still, well, it's all left-wing mainstream now. But, but so, so there's this. And then we've got the other part of this. So Keir Starmer, and let's not forget, Keir Starmer was the head of the Crown Prosecution Service that refused to convict or even investigate Jimmy Savile. That's that Keir Starmer. Who, do you want him as your prime minister? No. But then we've got uh, Rishi Sunak on the other side of this, facing his 11th, possibly facing his 11th by-election for the resignation of an M M uh, for the recall, potential recall of an MP in Blackpool who was corruptly offering to lobby on behalf of gambling institutions in, in lobbying ministers and, it, and was found out in a sting operation. Now, so he's going to presumably be forced to step down. That's going to force the 11th by-election in Rishi Sunak's uh, tenure, and he's going to lose that one in Blackpool as Blackpool North as well because it's, it's one of the red wall seats. It's traditionally a Labour seat, so he's going to lose it. The significance of this is that Rishi Sunak's only been in a, been the PM for what eighteen months, sixteen months, yeah, and he's eleven by elections. He's lost every single one. Eleven and um... but the de demonstrates Keir Starmer went to Davos only the other month. And said, I can do business here when asked whether he preferred Westminster or Dallas. So he's a swamp monster. He's an enemy of the people straight off the bat. And then you've got Sunak, who's a young global leader, who's related, his wife is the daughter of the guy who owns Infosys, worth billions of pounds. He personally, and his, he and his wife's personal fortune is 790 million pounds. They, they have no right. They have no understand, they have no right to govern in, in either of these P2 people. And the significance of this is that they're mired in corruption, they're mired in failure, and they're mired in, in the system that is oppressing the people. Yeah, and absolutely. I've never, never thought that I would say though, that phrase in my entire adult life. Yeah, Richard? Yeah, I completely agree. And I, I just sort of like to re um, add on to what you're saying there. It's really important to point. I wasn't saying it wasn't important to point these things out. Absolutely, this is what we, we're here for. We need to hold their feet to the fire. Of course we do. Um, It just means that, that we shouldn't start arguing amongst each other over who's the uh, good and bad guy because they're all fuckers. All um, but I just think that that's why we have a really good chat because there's a mutual respect across the board for each other's understanding of different areas and this is where we can that is what they fear is us putting all the pieces together and not arguing over who's right or wrong as you rightly say firm um, rishi sunak's wife she, uh, so her father so sunak's father-in-law um, is the owner of infosys and she got so infosys of which ashkata murti i'm assuming that's that's her 
her uh, maiden name, owns around 39 million shares, has been on an approval list of suppliers for public sector contracts worth more than 750 million each in each recent months. And this was only a few months back. Do, do you think, guys, listen to this, that these people really care whether you can go and find, buy a pot of buy milk later on today? 750 million. She's willing to throw you guys into war. So you don't care. They don't care. They live in a completely different stratosphere. They they think they're gods. They genuinely think they're the gods of the earth, which is what Satanism is as a mindset. It isn't just all of this other weird stuff in, in lodges and, and sacrificing children to the god of Saturn because they're scared of him. What it really, and that is part of it, but that's mostly compromise and just the mentalism. But really what it is that these people believe they have the right to decide what you do. And that is egotistical, playing God, Satanism at its core. So these guys are mind Satanists. They're, they're, they're the mind of Satan. And so you are dealing with people you can't get to. They don't care. As you say, Keir Starmer was, I think, pictured with um, um, Saddle, uh, Saddle, Saddle when he was a he kid. Was. So it, he was groomed by Saddle, Sab, Saddle, <laughs> Jimmy Saddle, in that um, in that environment. And um, There's a thought. It was a thought, yeah. Christ, there was a draw in there for Bob Moran. Um, <laughs> it, it is, uh, it is unbelievable that people don't put these things together or refuse really to look at him. He is a uh, trilateral commission, round table, Rockefeller, Rothschild, Absolutely. all the way, agenda 2030, trilateral commission, um, club of Rome. These guys are all the same and they are laughing at you guys. Jimmy Savile's show was called Jim will fix it for a reason. They've been laughing at you for hundreds of thousands of years and it's time to put an end to this. And the only way to do it is to have conversations like we're doing and be polite, respectful to anyone who's got different ideas. We don't agree on Trump, but what we agree on is the outcome of what we want. We have a, a a mutually mutual aim of trying to make this world a better place for the kids to come, and and that's all we need to concentrate on. These guys have a mutual understanding of they'd want to keep their godlike status for the rest of the rest and, of the, and they're, forever. And they're evil, and the evil things they do. Um, talking of evil yeah. things they do, and satanic things you were talking about there, Richard. Uh, let's go very quickly onto the subject of Syria. And the chemical attack that they were blamed for for years and years and years. And finally, we have the report that comes out. Uh, and I believe Lee has a picture of it. Uh, we have the report coming out from the OPCW, Investigation and Identi Identification Team, that, that shows that ISIL or ISIS uh, had exclusive means and motives and capabilities to deploy sulfur mustard in 2015 attack. And once again, uh, we have uh, people carrying out an attack uh, that they blame on the other side, but they're carrying out the attack themselves. And who fund them? Uh, let's talk about that, shall we? So why are America or American troops illegally in Syria? Uh, it is quite clear that they fund these people and that they carried out the chemical attack. Uh, Lee, you first and then Richard, uh, talk, talk me through this. Well, my understanding of this is that the, the white helmets, as they were referred to as the good guys in Syria, <laughs> they, they were funded by MI6. Yes. And they were the ones that did the the... the imaginary what they call crisis actors to use crisis yeah. actors to fake a chemical attack from MI6 and CIA yeah yeah and so it doesn't, it doesn't I say it doesn't I I knew this was the case back then I didn't yes. have proof this proof has now come out to make that case but those crisis actors I mean one of the babies that was used in that Syria bombing was then used again on the beaches of Greece as a crisis actor and they drugged that child to make it look like it was dead Twice, <laughs> these people are utterly evil, and and Rich, this I, I love the way Richard sort of reinterprets the politics that I follow because it needs to be reinterpreted. It needs to be. I, I like the way that we as a group sort of can take all of these dots and link them together to take all of these events and rationalise them with with what how they've self reinforced. And then to layer in the historical aspects of this, the family aspects of this, that these people are truly evil. Yeah, absolutely. Um, talking of evil people, talk to me of Yellen, Lee. Oh, yes. And uh, she's, a, she's a piece of work just completely in the round and, she, and has been all her career. Yellen is now currently with the, uh, the, the, the Fed and she's calling on world leaders to, let me just find the piece. She's, oh, she's she looks like Mo Molan's sister, don't she? 
<laughs> Something like that, yes. Um, she's calling on world leaders to take the the, 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 the the frozen assets of Russia and give them to Ukraine because Congress has failed to ratify the $60 billion, the next $60 billion, because they've already had $170 billion, to... To, to Ukraine to support Ukraine war. And you know, this is totally illegal at every level. You know, international law does not allow you to do you can freeze assets, but then you have to give those assets back. As the United States under Obama uh, and, and, uh, yeah, and Obama and Biden gave those assets, hundreds of millions of dollars of assets back to Iran. And so but what she's now calling for is utterly illegal, utterly reprehensible at every level and she's she's the treasury treasury secretary at the fed is that, the, have, is that the woman who tried to um shove hansel and gretel in the oven Lee? yeah i think it is and now she's trying to put us in the oven unbelievable wasn't it um the stealing yeah. money 300 million 300 billion sorry of frozen russian assets they want to get rid of that they want to give away to ukraine to carry on doing exactly what we just showed on videos, Richard. What are your thoughts? Yeah, well, I mean, she was born and raised in Brooklyn. That says a lot. She's probably got some bad tunnel digging background to her, I wouldn't have thought. She I'm has. Not gonna... Oh, she, she has. has. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she has, yeah. The only frozen assets I've got is some fish fingers, which I'm looking forward to later. I mean, these people do actually work on a, on a satanic level. So she went to... Um, all the, all, she ticks all the boxes, Yale University, Harvard University, London School of Economics. I mean, it's literally like she's put through the sausage machine of Satan, isn't she? Yeah, she, uh, she is. And she worked with Greenspan as well during that period. She I mean, did. And she Bill was... Clinton as well. She was, I mean, come on. She was like the worst. We've got to invite Yellen to the party. How, how about we don't? She's, she's, yeah. she's not got, yeah. <laughs> don't bring any yeah, mates. Whatever. Fed, she then served as a member of the Federal Reserve Board of Governors. I mean, come on. She afterwards, President Barack Obama, Barry, chose her to replace um, Vice Chairman of Federal Reserve. I mean, she's deep, deep in the well of of nonsense, isn't she? And obviously, born yeah. and raised in Brooklyn, so you're going to have that uh, that connection, I believe. There, if you really she, she did is, it enough, she, she is connected with all of those guys. Yeah. Exactly. Lee, uh, obviously human resources haven't checked her out properly, but but you've got a small story on uh, human resources, haven't you, and what we and what they get up to uh, well, now. Well, well, I wasn't going to cover this today. I was going to do it tomorrow, but being as you brought it up, yeah, it, we, yeah. <laughs> human resources is, is now being looked at in terms of it's a drain on the economy, which I could have told you that twenty years ago, and it's um, what they're talking about the the over politicisation of. Um, all of, it, all, all of these policies that we talk about from... I forgot what they are. I wasn't prepared for this question. Sorry. But, uh, we can uh, cover it more. It's the way it. HR actually is now detracting from the bottom line of companies where and the growth in HR as an industry and the fact that they, they, can, they make the hiring and firing decisions based on politics and whether you fit in with, with the, the, the woke model and... That was, that was the angle I was going to... I was going to do this tomorrow, but... Um, oh, we can, uh, we can do, to... not a problem. I'd, I'd just like to put you on the spot. Uh, talking of people... Yeah. <laughs> talking of people that are, are being put on the spot, um, the USA is being put on the spot, isn't it? Because China are not playing ball after we've had the nonsense uh, with the uh, floating barriers over the Philippines. Uh, China yes, is this, is, this, this, is a, this is an escalation story. Um, we, we've talked about Ukraine, and we've, talk, we've touched on Gaza, and we touched on Niger and, and Central Africa, with which is where, the, and, and Armenia in the Caucasus, where they're trying desperately to expand this conflict. And now we've got the the, uh, the Chinese are responding to this as well um, by basically um, a flotilla of military naval, naval ships into the the into Taiwan waters, and so. The, 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 sorry, I'm just struggling with my, there we go. China ignores US warnings and sends ships into the Taiwan restricted waters, Taiwan's own territorial waters. And this is a, this is an escalation. It's a potential escalation of the conflict. And I, I think China is using the opportunity of US weakness, military weakness, military, um, they're, they're spread too thin with the Gulf, Ukraine, all that's going on around the world. And, I think China is flexing its muscles just to have a see in this case, whether whether there will be a reaction to them. 
but it demonstrates it, it's not a great big story in itself, which is why it's at the end of the show or towards the end of the show. But it, it, it demonstrates that there are flashpoints that we're not talking about because of Ukraine. They're because of, because mm -hmm. of the, the, the economic crisis that we're in. You know, and we, we started on, on that, that side of things at the beginning of the show. So I think it's worth, worth really just keeping China, Taiwan, the South China Sea and these Spratly Islands and, and these island potential island conflicts on the, on in people in the public awareness. Yeah, and the yeah. risk of miscalculation. Uh, Lee and I d disagree slightly on on the timing of this, but we we don't disagree on the fact that it is coming. Um, Lee thinks it will be uh, shorter than four years. I think it will be uh, after the next election when the pro uh, Chinese party get control of the Taiwan government. I think the US will will see that as uh, a, a step too far, uh, rather like Russia did. Uh, in Ukraine, uh, Lee thinks you'll be even quicker than that. But the one thing we do, I think, I think, I, I think from a practical point of view, you're right, Warren. I think from a, you know, from a, 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 a an election cycles point of view, four, four, four five years now because they've just had one. I think from a military point of view, in terms of military build-up, manufacturing, training, putting for pieces, but I think four or five years is right, which it aligns with 2030 the agenda. I think the fact that they're behind schedule. <laughs> and they're pushing things so hard, and they're desperate now that once the CB, once the financial collapse comes, and and you know you look at the, the central the reserve banks in, in the US, that I forgot what it's called now, but the the the, the, the fund the funding promise from the Fed that that runs out on the eleventh of March. So you, after that, you're going to start to see banking collapses coming because there's no none of the banks have got reserves because they were encouraged to, to lend everything they had. So I think the reason I think it will start this year is purely because of the things that are in, that are in play. The fact that they're four years behind and they've not had that chance to to build build their military, to build their their presence around the world. They've not had that you know that that Trump that four years of Trump and then the the restarting of their machine in year one of Biden regime. I think they're so far behind that a they're running to catch up and they're behind, but they've got to go because. They've got all of these. They've got the the economy in play. They've got the CBDs in play. They've got biometrics in play. They've got mass immigration in play, and all of these things are going to come to a head. And they have to have started the war at that at, at or before that point. And yeah. you know, so we get disease X as well this year if if the if the IHT is is signed off by people, international health treaty. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's my only disagreement is the political. Veneer that sits on top of it. Well, we, we can agree to disagree without anybody getting cancelled on this show, Lee. It's brilliant. Um, Richard, uh, very, very simply, uh, in the words of the late, great uh, Mel Smith, the comedian who once turned around and said that uh, America are making up for the fact they were late for the last two world wars by being really punctual this time. Um, uh, have the new world order beat them to it? I think that they, they, they know there's a timing element and an occult kind of element to this of the age of Aquarius and getting it all done by um, 2250 I believe was the kind of the Kabbalist sort of version of it so yeah they're well behind in it as well um, and it really depends on kind of what part of the cult they believe in um, and they do well believe in a cult I mean you mentioned Isis earlier and I wanted to just bring this up um, the inversion of what Isis or Isis is another version of Semiramis um, Dimitri um, um, another one so the, the god of the basically she's the virgin mother which is the same trinity over and over again. So they name their things after these because they believe these people. So Isis, so in the inversion of what you're talking about with the serious situation earlier, she um she was said so you can cast spells on her husband Ra. Well, women could do that anyway. Um Isis had great powers such as healing, protection, and magic. So they've inverted what she was originally stood for in the Egyptian mythologies and they've called something Isis and they invert it, which they always do with Satanism. So understand that these are very much occultist Satanists in their mind of inverting everything and understand that they are working towards their own weird schedule. 2030 is a big year for them. They're not going to get there with this. We, I do genuinely believe that the alternative, genuine alternative media have caused such a problem for these guys that they, they are panicking to get everything in place because all they do and this is the fail safe of the system that i believe there must be something else going on here because all they do over the decades is prove us right and the closer they get to their goal their end game 
the closer they prove us right and people wake up. And it is a game of them trying to do it without waking too many people up in the process. And they're in panic because it's it's a it's a it's a difficult situation for them. Um, and that's I, where they are. But I agree, Richard. Richard, I mean, Richard, so Richard and Lee. Hang on, two six, Lee, and you and you jump in here. I want to ask this question to both of you. Um, how long will it be? Because obviously the alternative media is starting to highlight this stuff, especially shows like ours. Um, how long will it be, uh, gentlemen, before the uh, before they start blaming the war on us because we uh, jumped, we got ahead of them? Oh well. <laughs> I think just to. Back up Richard's, Richard's point, you know, Trudeau was on the TV only this week talking about how misinformation and the wrong facts and alternative media was skewing the minds of people against, you know, the, the, the right of what he's doing. I mean, I can't remember, paraphrasing there. Vastly. There's a man who owns 80% of Canadian media. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> they, are, they are in panic mode. And they are behind, and they are beginning to focus on us. And you've seen that with the, the way they've gone to war with Alex Jones, you know, and Infowars, and, and other 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 outlets. So yeah, ultimately, Richard's right. They're going to they are in panic, and you're right that they are going to focus on us at some point. Uh, France uh, has actually banned uh, Rumble. You can't actually get Rumble in France. Uh, they took that off. Um, but they did the same with RT, didn't they? Across yeah, Europe. Yeah. And okay, it, push it to this, that. Is, this is the thing. If people are wrong... Modern book burning. Yes, it, it is exactly what this is. You know, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's called it's bit burning. Yeah. It's, so it's, it's an official name now. Bit burning, yeah. It's, bit it's, burning, right? Yeah. yeah. And here's, here's the thing. If we are in the wrong, uh, just hold us up as lunatics. But what, you're, what you are, shouldn't be doing... Because if people are lunatics, you want them to show themselves. There are many, many uh, New World Order leaders out there who are shown to be lunatics, and we show them to you oh, as yeah. lunatics. Um, if we're lunatics, why do you want to silence us? Surely you want us out there where everybody can see us, do you not? Just a thought, okay. gentlemen. Goodbye. <laughs> Uh, gentlemen, it's been absolutely fantastic. It's been well over an hour and a half. It was uh, lovely having a chat over the garden, uh, over the garden fence. Uh, I don't uh, know what's happened to Danny Willett, but I'm sure he's absolutely fine. Um, so uh, he must have lost connection or something must have happened that caused him to leave the show early. Uh, we'll get to the bottom of that. That's what as investigative journalists do. Uh, Richard, where can people uh, find you on your social media, buddy? Um, they can find me on Iconic um, every Wednesday. My show classify goes out at 7 p.m., uh, but it's on there. Obviously, after that, it just stays on it. Iconic.com. also got a Substack, so if you put in uh, Richard Willett into Substack, you'll find uh, my Substack where I write a lot of stuff, and I'm, I'm going to start putting them into audio form as well. And what F Rich on X for the time being. Um, but, yeah, thank you for, for having me on and all your support. It's, uh, sometimes you just think, I can't be bothered to do, do this anymore. It would be easier if I just owned a greengrocer like my dad. But then you think... Yeah. Well, it's no point if they're going to poison the apples. I might exactly well. that. <laughs> yeah. Well, well you're, if you're a green grocer, mate, you won't have anything to sell. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, very uh, thank you so much for being with us, Richard. Uh, we've run out of time, so I'm going to say goodbye. Then it'll be Richard, then it'll be Lee. Um, if you are listening in the car uh, or you are doing something around the house while you're listening to us, uh, thank you very much for being here. If you are watching the show and putting up with uh, my, you're only here because of the, the handsome Richard Willett, not because of uh, myself and Lee. Uh, thank you so much. Please go and subscribe to our newsletter, which is, you can find on frontline.army and support the show at Patreon, The Real Truth 502. Uh, and as for now, we've run out of time. And, and all I can say now is it's time to say goodbye. So goodbye. It's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from them. Goodbye. Yeah,